What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Or if this is your first time, my name is Ben. Actually, if it's your second or third time, my name is still Ben. Thank you for uh, coming and join us. I'm going to play some songs, get things ready to go here for Fireside Chats. Of vocals there in the uh, in the chat.
Sala, I love my mom and Paul, not the way that I love you. Well, holy moment, me, oh my, you're the apple of my eye. Girl, I never loved one like you. Man, oh man, you're my best friend. Screaming to the nothingness. Here ain't nothing that I need. Hot and heavy, pumpkin spice. Chocolate candy, Jesus, I love nothing more than you. Oh, well, home, let me come home. Home is wherever I'm with you. Home, let me come home. Home is wherever I'm with you. Through the town, girl, I never loved one like you. With moats and boats and waterfalls, alleyways and paid phone calls, I've been everywhere with you. We laughed until we thought we died, barefoot on a summer night. Well, I said, sweeter than you. And in the streets, you're running free, like it's you and me. You're something to see. Oh, oh, home. Let me come home. Home is wherever I'm with you. I said, home. Let me come home. Home is where I'm with you. listen to a couple tunes here we are going to get this party started very shortly we have an awesome episode planned for you got it feeling nice and homey so i hope everybody's doing well out here i see people from all over the world which is kind of exciting anyways thank y'all for tuning in here hey aaron hey there goose you remember my first day and you were modeling a window I sure do. I remember it was a dynamic component. Well, you'd click on that window and it'd open and close and you could type the size and it would resize itself. You remember that? I sure do. Well, there's something I never told you about that day. What didn't you tell me? Well, while you were modeling that window, showing me all the things it could, could make, and I was falling deep, deeply in love with SketchUp. Just never told you till now. Aww. I said now home, let me come home. Home is wherever I want you. 
missing home Let me go Nice. Yeah, get out of here, Goose. Hey, Ben. How's it going? <laughs> well, it's going good for me. I don't think Goose is having such a great time. Well, uh, maybe he's just enjoying his home. I guess so, yeah. There. That was that was that was nice. Oh, hey! Thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I was I was uh, I was a bit aliens today for a second. It's really fun. Well, we didn't we didn't want uh, people to think that you know we had all the bugs worked out. It's not perfect yet, but uh, that's right. That's right. I, and Ben, it was it was awesome to get you to play, and and it was also awesome last week for you to step in when we lost our presenter for a while. And I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I hope we don't see you again this time yes, well i'm assuming you found the presenter right you did find him he was under the couch yeah we found him along with the remote control and some change but uh know, yeah the robots and the aliens there were a lot of possibilities there yeah <laughs> so, some things could have happened it could have got bad <laughs> oh man good choice of songs today i like that you had uh, make my dreams come true you had home and today we have a guest that who makes people's dreams come true with their homes so Perfect. 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 Dream home. Dream home. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. On well, that note. Uh, ben, yeah. Thanks for joining us. Everyone give a round of applause to our to our man, Ben Ham, and everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. All right. Welcome everyone to the Fireside Chat series. We're your hosts, Aaron Dietzen and the Goose. And if you're new to the series, welcome to the week three of our eight weeks at virtual community experience. It's both fun and informative. And if you're returning, welcome back around the fire. Ah, stay warm. That's right. Today's going to be a fun one. We have an amazing guest with us, interior design superstar, Ms. Tammy Cody. So Tammy yeah. is not only an awesome interior designer, but also a trainer. You can catch her work on sites like uh, lynda.com, um, ivy.co, her own website, and she's a repeat trainer for our own base camp. That's right. And um, as a reminder, uh, today's episode is going to consist of an interview, a presentation, and then community question and answer. Episodes expected to last about an hour and a half. Pour yourself a cup of coffee, get comfortable, and uh, let's do this, Aaron. All right. So before we hop in, uh, we got to get the serious stuff out of the way first. Down That's at right. the bottom, it's it's either this way or this way or somewhere. Mm -hmm. It says get audio slash video help. If you click on that, there's an option called compatibility mode. If you click on that, it's gonna prevent any issues that some of you are seeing where there's uh, lags in audio, video, hiccups, that kind of stuff. It just compresses the feed down, buffers it, and then streams it to you so you don't have those problems. Hey, hey, technology. Uh, other <laughs> housekeeping too <laughs> we wanna take care of is uh, Q&A. So if you look down below, uh, it says ask a question. Currently there are five questions in there. And uh, you know, if you have any questions for Tammy Cody today, be sure to ask them there. And uh, and if you see a question there that you um, wanted to ask, you could just give it an upvote and it'll bump that question up and we'll try to get to all as many as we can before the show's over. And just a reminder on that, uh, just I'm gonna stress what Steve said. These are mm -hmm. questions for Tammy. So if you have other questions about SketchUp in general or installing or something like that, Take those over to the forum, forums.sketchup.com. These are specifically things you want to know of Tammy. That's right. And uh, there will be a recording available of this very presentation in just a few minutes after the live stream ends. So if you feel like you've missed anything, you want to come back, just come back to the same page and you're going to be able to see the whole event again. Uh, lastly, polls. If you look down toward the bottom of the screen, uh, next to ask a question, if you see something that says polls and a little number one, boom, uh, then then uh, yeah, you can click on that poll and contribute. And I think we have a poll today, Aaron, what is it? That's right. So right off the bat, we're doing interior design here. So we want to know what your favorite room is in the house. Go ahead and click in there. Get, tell us if it's your living room, kitchen, bedroom, office, bathroom, garage. Maybe. If there's another room, if you have a room that's not listed on here, go ahead and throw that in the chat. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, if there's a unique room in your house that you like better than those standard ones. 
Yeah. Yeah. I just I like rooms that don't have mosquitoes in them. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. 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 It's, it's all good. I got, I got. All right. That's. Oh, that's that, better. That's. Ooh. I hope there's no deet in that because that deet stuff. That's no, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's great. It's moisturizing too. And it helps. It builds character. It removes skin. So that's good. <laughs> uh, oh man. Okay. Let's, let's see what we have in our poll here. Um, it looks like 35% say living room. Wow. I guess yeah. it makes sense. That's where you spend a lot of room, spot, spend a lot of time. There's a second question there too. If you wanted to scroll down past that first poll, if you were given fifty thousand dollars, which room in your house would you rent it? I could, you know, fifty thousand. That that's that's a nice TV. That, that <laughs> might, I might have to go back to the living room again on that one. Yeah, I can't really see the poll. My eyes are stinging, but I, I'm going to go with kitchen. I'm surprised <laughs> you're still able to talk. So, and take yeah. what you can get. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, Stephen noticed I missed. I missed a spot. Uh, uh, see, yeah. There you go. Ooh, Ooh. that's cold. Yeah. Oh, no bites there. Right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. All right. So uh, let's see here. I think let's, uh, I'm going to just wrap up the poll here. Let me take a look at what we had. Uh, so we had living room with 62 votes, 35 percent. We had kitchen with 53 percent. Uh, upgrade uh, and we're not giving away an upgrade, but I think we are giving away something. We are. So this is going to be a fun one. Uh, we are. We do have another giveaway that we're going to be be giving to one of you, and uh, it's going to be awesome. You have to pay attention to the presentation. We're going to bring Tammy on a little bit. She's going to do her presentation. You have to pay attention because at the end of her presentation, she's going to ask a question about it, and the first person to correctly answer wins a prize. And what's our prize this week, Goose? Today, lucky winner will get one whole hour of one-on-one -on -one consultation with our esteemed guest, Tammy Cody of SketchUp for Interior Designers. So listen close, limber up those fingers, and be prepared to answer today's quiz question. That's going to be good. It's going to be good stuff. It's going to be good. Um, I hope yeah. you win. Not you. You can't play, Aaron, but I hope, I hope someone in the audience can win. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now, though, we're going to do something. We got a little something we call the community shout out. That's right. Community shout out. Who's our community shout out today? Well, first of all, what is the community shout out? Let us all know. Right. So each week we, we find somebody, a user in our community who's posting unique or enjoyable SketchUp work somehow. So we've looked at people on the forum. We've looked at uh, people online. So today we actually have somebody on Instagram. So mm -hmm. the person we're looking at today is Kare Design Design Studio. Oh man, I worked so hard to get Kare right. I forgot the word design. Come on, man. Oh, Sorry guys, geez. I don't talk in front of cameras very often, so I'm, I'm tripping over myself. You forget how to English. All right. So if you if you look through, we got a link down below to Kare on uh, Instagram. And the cool thing is, I mean, you look at it and you'll immediately notice there's some, some SketchUp look in there. Uh, the other thing that they do is take a combination of printouts of SketchUp drawings and then hand color or draw do artwork over top of it. So they get unique looks of this composite uh, accurate because they're in SketchUp, but hand drawn because they go over top of it with pencils, pens, markers, paint, that kind of stuff. Mm. And you've seen in there, I gotta jump back a couple, they use the SketchUp viewer. So that's awesome too. That is very good. So yeah, very great good. design studios, check it out. Awesome, great, yeah. awesome account on Instagram. Very good work, or maybe even awesome, awesome work. Speaking awesome. of awesome, you, you know, else is awesome. All of our amazing interior designers who are joining us here today. Let's get a little shout out. If you wouldn't mind maybe putting your business name or dropping a link to your uh, design business in the chat. Yeah, here, here's what I want to do. I, we haven't tested this. I want to see how fast we can make the chat scroll. So I'm going to count down from three and everybody type in the name of your business. And then when I get to say go, everybody put in there. Let's see if we can make that thing like just blurry. All right. So here we go. Right. Get ready. Three, two, one. Put it in. Uh, okay. That's not actually. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Cheryl's in the in the lead. This might be top speed. Oh, my because gosh. It's, it's refreshing wow. at a very consistent rate right now. Woo. No, oh. oh, man. <laughs> it's like a page at a time. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
That is Oh my awesome. gosh. It's still going. Wow. <laughs> okay. So uh, it was 1,600 uh, people. <laughs> we were going to read some of these off, but they're not going. Okay, I'm going to try. We got Matt Clark, Ken. <laughs> and nope, that's our sorry. show for tonight, folks. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right. Wow. Good job, that's... guys. That was a lot. Holy cow. Yes. It's still coming. All right. Wow. Yeah, you guys are awesome. We should awesome again for that. We should, yeah, I think we will. Wow. Look, it's awesome. still going. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I can't even read that fast. Okay. No, I mean it's it's impossible. They're they're going by so quick. We may I don't know if it keeps track of how many comments there are either, but we may have like uh we may have ex <laughs> may, like max out the number of comments. You guys are so cool. Very awesome. You know who else you know who else is cool? Our guest, Tammy Cody. That's right. I think we should we, that's enough of us. Let's let's bring on somebody <laughs> somebody actually wants to see or talk to. So yeah, we'll bring on Miss Tammy Cody. Tammy Cody, awesome. Come on. Sit around the fire. Get nice and warm. <laughs> there she comes. That's some nice mountain music right there. It is. You, you know, hey. Tammy. Awesome. Yeah, welcome. Hey, there. hey Tammy. Oh. It's, uh, it's great to have you back. So, yeah. like... I guess it's almost a year ago or so you did your top tips video for interior designers with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to let you know, that was like one of our top viewed videos in the last year. That was so many people viewed and commented on that. And we recognize that. And we had plans to bring you back in to do some other videos, but then the whole world shut down. So I'm, I'm glad we were at least able to do this virtually. Same. Yep. For sure. Thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. Very nice. So, Tammy, look what I got here. This is this is the brand new SketchUp for Dummies book. And guess who made this awesome image right here? I recognize that. You did, yeah. So I was going to see if you could maybe sign my copy. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Will you do that for me? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, got a couple more yes. people here, too. Those are familiar people, too. I think I saw this guy in the chat. Yeah, Josh Riley. Hey, oh, say your nice hands in the air. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sign it. Yeah. Who do I make it? Up you can here? say uh, goose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know. Okay, okay. All right, here you go. Ready? Awesome. All right. Nice. Look at this, Aaron. I get my own signature edition sketch. You're Dunks. pretty fancy now. That's right. To to goose never change. Have a great summer, Tammy Cody. And it's spelled like the bird goose. So close enough. You're my wingman, Goose. <laughs> Thank you for the signature. Uh, and uh, you know, I'd like to kick this off, Tammy, with that with a couple of icebreaker questions, like we always like to do. So the first thing is, and I want to be a little bit selfish here because we don't we've never had an interior design guest. So Aaron and I, we could we can drop our green screens and we can show you our office, and then maybe you can give us some tips on what we could do to make them prettier. Okay. That sounds good. All right. I'll, I'll go right, first. So go ahead okay, Goose? Drop your screen. Sure yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, this is a green screen, but we can, I can, with technology, I can take Not it down really. and you can see yeah. here's where actually working. So, yeah. Okay. Love to hear how to make this a better, yeah, a better I workspace. Mean, I am interested to hear what the people in the chat have to say about the space, too. Of course, we're not fans generally of drop ceiling, but they're good for finding things like baths and things like that. It does look for, like, yeah. A yeah. really interesting place to work. Uh, it's a little cluttered. Lots of paper going on back there. I'm not sure what that's all about. Yeah, I just call it the <laughs> office. I don't know. If it's nothing okay. special, you know. Oh, but. Yeah, maybe it's a paper company. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe some pops of color. I know yeah. we, we like to say that a lot. Pops well, there is a, a green Jello mold right here, but um, <laughs> that counts. Right. It's first. Well, I will. I will. I will let uh, Goose show his space next. All right, so I'm gonna, gonna take down. Up. I'm gonna take down my screen here. So um, here we go. Get that out of the way. Oh, so okay. I, it's kind of, it's kind of cold. I'm gonna move over to the side though, cool. see if you can see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you must be friends with somebody uh, pretty cool there. But uh, yeah. Well, my friend Tony said I could use his office because his Wi-Fi is super good, and wow. so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's got like suits of armor or something. He's yeah. he's a weird. He's kind so, of weird. But so overall, I like it. It's a lot cleaner mm -hmm. looking. I think that the mm -hmm. bodies in the background might be a little distracting when you have meetings. Uh, 
I can see why you use the green screen, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not so much. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. It's, if it does feel a little bit cold and stark, but uh, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll see if I can book a consultation, and then you can just like yeah. help have me get Tony, to the place. Have Tony, call me. Just call okay. Me. Yeah. We'll do. Perfect. We'll do. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, so to ask a semi-serious question, uh, you have mentioned before that SketchUp is very popular with interior designers. Why, what is it about SketchUp you think that makes it so popular with that specific group of users? Yeah, it's just it, uh, SketchUp is accessible and it's flexible. So that's its two main strengths. Uh, you know, a, a singular interior designer and their own sole proprietorship can hop into it easily price-wise and accessibility-wise. And uh, the flexibility of it is great. You can pretty much draw anything once you get, you know, the tools down. So it's a lots a lower barrier to entry for sure for interior designers as they start, and then it grows with them. You know, you can do anything with it. So love it. I agree. Makes sense agree. to me. So, so here's another question, uh, Tammy. Uh, if well, actually, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? <laughs> <laughs> this is a deep question here. How, how, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? How old would I be? Okay, um, let's. I would be. I think twenty nine. Twenty nine. That, that's that's a good age. I think I think the the human mind is fully developed by age twenty nine. Before yeah. that, that's yeah. right. I mean, I'm, I feel stuck between twenty nine and fifty five. <laughs> that's why I'm actually thirty seven. Oh, fair. <laughs> I guess, depending on the morning, um, yeah, coffee, yeah. coffee, and in, yeah, yeah uh, intake and, I feel and all like that. A Sixty-year-old woman, and some days I feel <laughs> yeah. awesome. You, you, yeah, you know, I saw I saw a, a photo of you and your new longboard, your skateboard. Uh, that might be. You a know what I'm talking? Photo. Oh, yeah, I don't write that much in the anymore on the count of getting old. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, doesn't matter. Yeah. Skater, skater girls are still the coolest. Yeah, so. cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I didn't have a question about skating, but I, I was curious. Uh, somebody actually made the comment, Mike Wazowski made the comment about 3D Warehouse being part of why SketchUp's so, so well supported by interior designers. How often do you hop into the 3D Warehouse? Yeah, I hop in every single day. Um, I you know, can almost always find a good representation for what I'm looking for. And I think that actually a lot of other users who aren't SketchUp users use the warehouse for other programs. It's just like a really good uh, central location for everyone to toss stuff into and get a lot out of it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Every day. Goose likes the warehouse. Yeah. Yes. I work in the warehouse. Yeah. I, I'm a I'm a I'm a stalker. So like a re, like I restock the shelves with new models. So. <laughs> <Nice>. Stalker. <laughs> yeah, not that kind of stalker, Aaron. <laughs> so Tammy. Uh, uh, so which design decade do you love the most wow. and why? Gosh. Is it the 70s with yeah. avocado refrigerators? I was going to say, I do love the 70s. Uh, <laughs> and when we were in uh, Base Camp Palm Springs, we went to a couple of uh, 70s style restaurants. And it just really, I mean, I wasn't alive in the 70s, but it took me back to my parents decorating. You know, I, yeah, yeah, it was very nostalgic. I love it. 70s, yeah. even 80s. Yeah, I just love it. Yeah, nice, nice. Do you think avocado refrigerators will come back? Avocado colored. Oh, I think that they are. Yeah, they're still. Okay. Nice. To, yeah. Say go for it. <laughs> we'll That's do. amazing. Yeah. Right along right. with those, uh, those glass uh, grapes, the little. <laughs> thing. Yeah. Glass grapes, probably on eBay. Cool. I give you, awesome. I give you permission to do that, Goose. <laughs> where's that? Where's that? Put shag carpet. Is that still like? Is that ever going to cut? That's just no, bad. No. <laughs> in the kitchen, especially. Uh. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it in the bathroom. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's why I keep finding it so cheap. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so Tammy, you do interior design work, but you also do a lot of training. I do. Um, so if you had, this is your opportunity to just one thing, one thing you could tell everybody who's learning SketchUp, what would that one thing be? Uh, sorry, can you ask that question one more time? I was reading the chat. Someone said we had red shag, and I was just mortified. So, Stop distracting Tammy, Eric. If I had one thing to keep 
say what, what if you could give uh, a new new users of SketchUp trainees, people who are just coming up to speed, what would be the one thing you would tell them to do in SketchUp? Can I have two? Uh, I will anyway. So. It's your show, so I guess. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm rolling it. Um, click and release. Don't click and drag. You're going to create you know, a bad habit if you click and drag. And also uh, group. Put things in the groups. Separate things out. Get used to doing that. I know people fight it in the beginning. They like to leave everything loose. But if you click and release and group things or put them into components, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. Good, good points, yes. Nice, everyone should listen to that advice because I just noticed the other day, I looked up Tammy Cody to find out a little bit more about you, I Googled it, and you dominate the entire first page of Google. Like you own it. You're the queen of Tammy Cody's. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna email all of them and them now because I get all their emails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who, who's not a stalker there, Goose? Uh, yeah. No, it's a- it's Research. <laughs> yeah, researcher, <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. You know, Aaron, I think I know what time it is. I think it is. Yes, it's game time. That's right. So, Tammy Cody, we're about to play a game called Does Tammy Know Design? We're going to ask you a bunch of multiple choice <laughs> questions and test how much you know about interior design, Aaron. What's our first question? All right. Up first, and, and play along at home. So as we ask these questions of, oh, yeah. of Tammy, they're going to pop up down in the poll. So uh, Tammy, we're going to ask you not to look at the polls okay. unless you absolutely have no choice and you need that lifeline, OK? okay. So right. honor system here. All right, question number one. The term Art Deco, is it A, short for famed interior designer Arthur Dekonowitz? Is it B, a modern style of visual arts that first emerged in France with the leadership with the lead up to World War I? Or C, the description of artwork created for Brazilian football player Anderson Luis de Souza? I don't think I need my phone a friend. I think it's B. All right, Goose, is that correct? Oh, that one is point. Correct. That, that is correct. Awesome. Sorry, I should Very good. Let's let's see, let's, polls let's, to answer. I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna see what the poll said here. Let's see what they said. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are, they are, you guys are right too. Awesome. Good All job. Right. All right. Question number two is Bauhaus a Lithuanian, is Lithuanian for shadow of a tree house in the morning sun? Is Bauhaus a small dog house found at the front of a boat? Or is Bauhaus a style that is defined by simplistic modernism and the concept of form following function? Which one is it? Ooh, that's mm. a tricky one. I, if you don't B answer B, it means you hate dogs. I kind of want it to be B. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with C. C. Yes, you're correct. Bauhaus is style. Look how the people in the chat feel now. Man, we yeah. got a smart bunch of smart. viewers this week. Look at them go. All right, let's keep All moving right. along. Okay. Up right. next is Feng Shui, a, a traditional method of Chinese design based on uh, energy forces, B, a noodle dish made from mushrooms and pig feet, mm. or C, a kitchen utensil used to separate strands of noodles when they're stuck together. I'm getting so distracted by the chat. I think it was A. <laughs> <laughs> That's I right. I what everybody has to say. I should stop watching. <laughs> I, I I like the extra challenge that our that our chat uh, participants right. are, are yeah, adding. Yes, yes. Right. All right. Question number four. We're almost done here. Is Patina what Aaron used to call his childhood friend Tina's father, Patina? <laughs> is it Spanish for little Pat, or is it a light layer of gloss or film which appears on the surface of uh, as a result of age or artificial distress? A, B, or C. All right. Give people a chance to answer, but. I think it's D, all of the above. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Patina is my favorite. I love it. So I'm going to say C. I love this. That's, that's right. That's right. All right. Last two questions. Aaron. All right. What do we got? Is retro the type of grade that Mars has been in since 2019? Is it a design that harkens back to older styles and sensibilities? Or C, is it decorating a home while doing the robot? We all know the answer to this one. What was B again? <laughs> the correct answer. <laughs> yeah, <this is> <laughs> That's right. 
P, our final question. You, you're on a roll. You don't even have to answer number six, and you would still win. So, but here it goes. Okay, the I'll term, listen to you. you have my full attention. Okay, the term Victorian is A, an architectural style defined by highly ornate and uh, grand sweeping facades. Okay. B, the title of the winner or victor of the annual Welsh Train Racing Festival. Mm -hmm. Or C, the proper name of those old timey looking phones with the part that you hold up to your ear and the other part you talk into. Which one is it, Tammy? It is A. That's right. You got, oh my gosh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Teacher's pet. Nailed awesome. it. And Nailed it all. It. <laughs> <laughs> Patina is job, the, Patina's the name of uh, the look for everybody that has kids that are wrecking everything. <laughs> we just said, oh, it's Patina. <laughs> I thought it was, that was distressed. Oh, yeah. Distressed. <laughs> Those yeah. dents in my refrigerator are just dis distress marks in the avocado paint. All right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or in Japan, wabi sabi is the term yeah. for that. Um, yeah. yeah. So a little more housekeeping here as a reminder, the questions for Tammy are go down in the bottom where it says, ask a question down there. There's currently 20 questions. So if you see one that you like, you can just upvote it. You don't even have to type anything. Just upvote that question okay. and it may bubble to the top and we'll ask it. Um, and Another important point, if you what? do ask a question and it does not get answered, there we're, we're not gonna have, and we already got 20 questions. We're not gonna be able to answer them all. We're gonna answer the top few. If you have a question immediately following this, we will all be hopping over to the forum, forums.sketchup.com. And at the top is Fireside Lounge for this episode three of the Fireside Chat. Tammy's gonna spend about half an hour afterwards answering questions. So take your question if we didn't get to answer it, hop over there, post it in the forum and uh, Tammy will hopefully get a chance to answer it there. Yep. Awesome, Tammy. So Aaron and I, I think you're gonna duck down and let you get the presentation that everyone has been waiting to see. Uh, Tammy, take it away. All right. All right. My screen. Let me know if. Whoop. All right. Are y'all seeing my screen? Yep. And I'm going to turn on my video. Just turn my video off, just in case I don't want to cause any stuttering. So here it goes. All right. Awesome. Looking good. Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. Uh, well, thanks for the intro and the fun times. Uh, somebody wants to know what I won in the chat, so we can talk about that later. We can talk about my prize. <laughs> <laughs> it's really more of a prestige thing. Oh, okay, I, that's even better. All right, so I want to talk a little bit, give you a little bit more of an intro about myself, pretty short. I'm going to hop into some models and some layout files, and then we're going to do a little bit of live modeling at the end. Um, and like they said, feel free to ask any questions and uh, throughout, and I'll try and get to them all, at least in the forum. Okay, so again, my name is Tammy Cody. I own Cody Design Studio, and that is in San Luis Obispo, California, where I'm calling in from today. And I also teach SketchUp over at SketchUpForInteriorDesigners.com, and those are the two things that I uh, love doing work-wise. Um, this is me down here. I also love to be outside, and so I put myself in the little base camp or fireside chats tent. And to do this, you can you may notice that I'm presenting in layout. And I want to awesome. just double click. Yeah. Yeah. We, we should probably point out that any other future presenters joining, Tammy's winning right now <laughs> because she's using layout to present. But I'm oh, sorry. All right, no worries. Okay, so to create this, I just created a clipping mask with a shape, and I'll point out later on why that's really handy, but uh, I can click off of that and create shapes. And uh, that's great for like calling out details and drawings, um, bringing something to the forefront without having it take up the entire page. I'll show an example of that later on. All right, I'm gonna go to the next page. One more short bit about myself, so you know me a little bit better. Sorry, everybody. I'm getting beach ball. Got a lot. Ah, that's a, they can just look at Jay. They can just search for you on Google. Well. <laughs> I've got a lot of files open. So, all right. So, uh, this is the three different basic nodes for modes for Tammy. Uh, on the left, like they said, I do lots of SketchUp training. That is me uh, earlier in the year in LA in training mode before the whole pandemic hit. I used to teach once a uh, once a month in major cities, two day trainings. Shout out to anybody in the chat who's been to any of my trainings. I love uh, working with those designers. And because uh, it's LA, I've got a hat on indoors. That makes no sense. Uh, yeah. that's my supplies. All right, so middle is mom mode. That's uh, my two kiddos, my little family, Henry and Ollie. 
Um, and that's my big smile because I love them so much. And so you might notice all of these tags. Over here on the last part, I've got like Tammy in outdoor mode because I love being outside. And that's my car, Gertie, and her little tree house. But you may notice that Gertie's tag is different. So I guess I don't need these guys yet. Um, so Gertie has a different font, a different endpoint. And one of the cool things in layout is if you're trying to bring consistency to your file, you can sample other uh, styles and apply it to uh, the tag, to dimensions. If a, one model is a certain style with the shadows on, you can apply that to another model right in layout. So this brings a lot of consistency. And then if I were to create any other tags, it would carry on with that sample. Just, just to point out that you, you guys are seeing this, Tammy can't help but train. So <laughs> she's like two slides in her presentation and she's teaching you things, pay attention. <laughs> All right, so uh, like I said, I own Cody Design Studio and these are some drawings that I've done either for training other designers or for my own projects. And right off the bat, we can see that these are, we've got some more inconsistencies in this layout page. And again, uh, layout makes it pretty easy to uh, make a nice looking presentation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this image below, hold down shift, select the top one, right click, align left. So I want everything to be nice and lined up. So I could do that with all of them, but that looks good. And again, you can see that this one doesn't have a border. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that uh, sample, sample the style and apply it over here. Again, sorry, but I'm getting the beach ball. And <laughs> right over here. So what's the that? Yeah, yeah, tech ones, yeah. Yep. So I want to come back to this bedroom uh, image and this pop-up coffee shop image later on. So take note of those. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, I would like to hop over to a different file. This one may look familiar if you've seen the blog post on SketchUp's blog. This model was for a TV show called Queer Eye. Um, shout out in the chat if you've seen that show and you love the Queer Eye, the Fab Five guys. Maybe even say who your favorite one is. Uh, I think my favorite one is Tan. Anyway, so uh, this was for an episode in their Japan series. The very last episode in that series was called Bringing Sexy Back. And it was a very small apartment. And I uh, was brought on to uh, do the drawings for this built-in um, bed, loft, desk, staircase, drawer thing. So there were quite a few limitations to this project. One of them being that I uh, was not in Japan. And the team was. so the design team was in Japan. And I was not. And so what we did was they took an iPad with a structure sensor on it and they scanned the space, uh, sent it to scan the CAD using the Canvas software. And then um, I'll show you a couple more views while I'm talking here. Hey, this is Tammy, I got a question. Did, did I see you in a social media ad for this structure sensor? Uh, you did, yes. Okay, I yeah. so. I, I'm <laughs> friends with all, the, all those folks. They're cool, cool people over there. That they are. We, we've we've used their stuff a little bit, and it is very. It, it's a pretty cool device. Yeah, it's so neat, especially with the new lidar. You know, uh, you don't necessarily need the the attachment anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. lots of really exciting technology. So that's what we used for this. Um, the resulting. Um, you can see the larger model over here. Um, this was the resulting scan, but we focused on this space here. So that was one limitation. Uh, second limitation was I was uh, work I'm used to working not in metric and imperial and uh, Japan they're you know working in the metric system so SketchUp made it easy to swap that over. That that is rough. I I, I had a, a two week training session in Canada once which was mm -hmm. all metric and that was. Yeah. That was hard to do. Yeah, it, it kind of breaks my brain. I know a lot of folks <laughs> out there in the chat are used to it, which is awesome. Someday I will get used to it. But so that was the second limitation. So the third one was that the carpenter who was going to build this unit. And as I'll click around, you can see all the different groups. Like I was saying before, you want to group things together, make it easier to break apart. Um, he did not speak English. So we needed to provide a set of drawings for him that he could easily just take and build something. So as I click through these different scenes here, you can see how I was asking him to like layer the build and show him what is underneath so that if 
by the time we got to the top, you could kind of see what was under here and not have to guess what all of this is. So I want to show you the resulting drawings from that. So this is the layout pages from that model. So you can see really tiny space. We had to make sure that we double, triple checked the, um, the dimensions because it's floor to ceiling, wall to wall. Um, there is more information about this project on the SketchUp blog. Uh, go into a little more detail about the limitations, but you can see all those metric measurements here. But again, SketchUp made it so easy to just flip that switch. Oh, one more thing. You can see this clipping mask right here. So that's a fun way to show it in 3D without taking up the whole page and focus on the measurements down below. So. Oh, talk about maximizing space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was great. The design team did such a great job. Um, and if you wanna see it, finished product, uh, the finished product of it, it's bringing sexy back uh, Netflix Japan. But now here, on this page, you can see the different levels that I was clicking through. And you're not gonna be able to accomplish this if you don't group things and tag them and you know, kind of organize your model. So that's one of the things I really like to teach is model organization and good habits. All right, so next up, another fun, uh, Celebrity project that I can't really say the name of who it is, but this uh, massive house um, doesn't have, uh, you know, the finished design on the inside of it. But we're asked as designers to do this quite a bit, build a model um, to, to then design on top of. So this one, I did not have the scanner. I did it all, you know, on site. But the limitations of this was one, it's a massive house. And the second one was I couldn't get into it right away, but I had a really quick turnaround. So the starting point was, I'm gonna turn on the image tag, and you can see where I started here. So I was sent to this and uh, worked on this at my desk. I, this is, you may have worked on something kind of like this in the past, this hand drawn. This is actually a really good one. Um, I've worked on some trickier ones, but, but these are kind of fun. And thankfully, uh, when I was able to get on site, it was built really closely to what those dimensions were. So I just had to kind of zhuzh some walls um, and then bring them up. So is, is that a tech technical term, just zhuzhing? Yes, it is. A, <laughs> okay. Technical, I don't know if uh, you're ready to use it yet. No, uh, no, I'm, I'm not interior design savvy. So yeah, I learned that yeah. today. I'm writing it down right now. Zhuzh. Mm -hmm. zhuzh. zhuzh. How do you spell zhuzh? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. That's okay. might be French. Do you have any French people in the, <laughs> in the chat? Jij. J O O G H G H J. I may have Got learned it. that from uh, the Queer Eye guys on their show. All right. Yeah. So, like I said, I was brought on to do the as built drawings, uh, also the window schedule. So, I needed to create a section cut um, or a few section cuts to show at least every window once. So, as I click through these, you can see all the different windows. And then I also was brought on, like I said, as built drawings. So these are the three different levels of the house. So uh, yeah, the, I'm sure people are probably gonna wonder this in the chat, how long did it take to draw that? I was on site for about six hours, you know, measuring every room. Thankfully, all the, a lot of repeat window sizes, things like that. So um, I did draw that directly into SketchUp while I was on site. So here's the resulting document from that. And these are gonna be, you know, just as built. I've got some uh, uh, number codes here for, or letter codes for the windows, the corresponding windows. Um, and here you can see that when I click on each view and open my SketchUp model window, you can see that each of these are part of those scenes that I was clicking on before. So I didn't have to redraw anything. I just brought those scenes into layout added the dimensions. And this is a really great um, example, if I zoom in here, example of why we should annotate dimension, call out, stuff like that, Oop, a little bit too much, um, in layout and not in SketchUp because, sorry for all the jumpiness. <laughs> I have so many files open that it's, it's pretty jumpy. All right, so I wouldn't get uh, this level of, uh, of of style control with my dimension lines. I'm too, too afraid to zoom way out. Um, <laughs> uh, we just have a lot of control stylistically over annotations and layout is what um, my, my point is. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna hop forward to the next page. 
Let's see. All right. Just looks nice and clean. And if we dimension, and I know there's a dimensioning tool in your SketchUp model, but try and refrain from using that unless you absolutely have to, because it's going to look so much better here. All right. So next up, we've got a fun and personal project that I'm sure many of you can relate to. This one may look small, but in my eyes, it's mighty because I was sitting in a board meeting, a virtual board meeting uh, over the summer and listening to our school board announce that my kiddos were going to be uh, virtual learning this fall through Christmas. And I learned my lesson from last year. I didn't want my kids in my kitchen table. I needed to figure out their bedroom. So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, uh, this story. But as I'm sitting through the meeting, it took about a couple hours, um, I was drawing their room and panicking slightly about how we were all gonna function together. So um, I created two options for them. Uh, this was option one, just really minimal. I wanted to keep their floor clean. I'm gonna open my tab so you can see this. And then option two was a little bit heftier of an option, um, but I was also working on you know, adding other small details to their room like storage and, and uh, artwork. And these are, we actually have those on their wall now. Aaron might push it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. But the fun thing about this small but mighty um, uh, project is that uh, I can click through these two different option scenes with different views because I was able to tag each option. So you can watch those option one and option two as I click through this. And then under my scenes, you can see that my camera location is unchecked when I set this option one and option two. Um, so that's nice for your design clients because obviously you're gonna have a much more massive uh, design in most cases, but you can easily view it from anywhere in the room and show them two different options. You don't have to fly to the same starting point, uh, uh, the, the same uh, camera location every single time. You can turn that camera location off and show it nice. from different locations. So which okay. one did they choose? Oh yes, so they chose option two because they wanted to. They thought it was really cool that you could fold out a desk and then close it back up and put away the clutter, uh, which nice I thought was fun too. What's that? A nice and tidy. Nice and tidy, which no little boy that I know is nice and tidy, so they always leave it open. Turns out, <laughs> they never get closed. But that's well, fine. As long you as can't, you can't pile your stuff on a vertical surface. That is true. Mm -hmm. That's so true. All right, so let's return back to that bedroom uh, file. Okay, so this may, uh, I'm gonna click on the view that I rendered that from. So that this, this bedroom file was the one that I showed you in the very beginning in those slides. Um, this is the SketchUp model for it. I uh, worked on it, uh, got a rendering going and wanted to get a really quick and easy way to just show a good amount of information, uh, a nice looking rendering, um, but not spend too much time on working on the visual for it. Just wanted to get a, kind of a quick and dirty rendering. So I rendered this scene and then I also took the exact same camera location and turned off the textures. So this is just a, um, the edges and shadows. And so I exported both of those. So it's important to have the exact same camera location because then I put it into Photoshop and layer them one on top of the other. So you can see if I turn off that rendering, this is that resulting, uh, just the edges and shadows as a PNG, turn back on the rendering. I'm gonna turn off those edges so you can see just what the rendering looks like. And the rendering looks great. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get asked in the chat uh, what, what I used for this. For this one, I used SU Podium to render it. It looks fine all on its own, but I am missing you know, some, uh, some information up here as far as the crown molding goes. Oftentimes we'll lose um, some detail in the drawers if they, you know, those edges aren't showing uh, where they break up. So it's great to be able to put in those edges and then that shadow just mm. looks a lot better when I add that back in there. So you can see that I'm getting some really good line work in there just by simply adding back in those, those edges. That's Real awesome. quick, Tammy, how long does it yeah. take you to do a composite like that? Once you have um, all your images exported. 
Oh, just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of fun to play with, you know, any kind of filter or, you know, I, I, I tend to go not too high on the filter. I don't want it to look too overblown. You know, I want the, the information to be as clear as possible and, and uh, as close to my vision as possible. But yeah, it's just, just a couple of minutes to throw these edges back in there. So yeah, that's awesome. sharp and beautiful. Yeah. 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 So I'll show you one more. Um, one more example of that. Again, this uh, this pop-up coffee shop example. Um, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the difference. This is with it all layered up. But if I turn off those lines, it still looks great. You know, it's totally, mm -hmm. I would send this to a client, but it's kind of fun to add in those edges and just get some more fun detail in the leaves um, and, uh, you know, these, these cups and, um, you might notice that I've got the lines extended quite a ways, mm -hmm. and that's something you can achieve in the styles window. And if I turn off the render, you can, oh, let's see here. If I turn off the render, you can see that those edges are actually sepia. So that's another fun thing to try in the styles window is play with the color of the edges and then overlay that on top of your rendering. You, you know, we get a lot of people asking about that is, uh, you know, getting, it's a lot of work to get something to look photorealistic. Yeah. But we have more and more people who are preferring something like this because they say it's more approachable for their customer to look at something that has those lines. It looks like a work in progress as opposed to something that looks like a photograph. Yes, absolutely. Because if they see something that looks like a photograph and you're still in the middle of the design process, they may feel a little bit like, oh, you're already, you decided everything. And I don't, I don't really like that particular wallpaper or, you know, they, they get a little bit grouchy, like they feel like it's done, even though they're not feeling done with it. So it's better to go on the side of like architectural, that vintage sketchiness, if you can, um, or just something simple without, you know, too many finished details. Um, I, I really want to encourage designers to not put too much pressure on yourselves to uh, feel like you have to be a graphic artist to make these ultra photorealistic drawings um, because our clients don't often need that to make a decision. Um, and we don't really, all we need to do is sell our design, work through our design and convey that to our clients. So I encourage them to just kind of back up and um, you know, go for something a little, a little looser, but very cool. All right, and then my last model, well, I guess I have a couple of models within this model. Did I just get a bug splat? No, okay, no. good. Oh. Oh. Okay. Look out, Josh is sneaking up on you. Yeah, he is, he's gonna get me. Okay, uh, I feel like I'm frozen. Nope, there we go. All right, so we've well established by now that I love being outside and uh, my, one of my dreams is to have a mudroom with uh, just lots of gear, lots of space, areas to plan adventures, and a spot to drop everything and get it washed or wash it when I get back. So this is kind of a fun pie in the sky um, model here. But one of the most fun things about this model is there's a, all this entourage, you know, and that's one of the ways we tell a story of our design and, and sell a design to a client is by adding in all of these fun pieces throughout the space. Because without them, it would look kind of boring. It still look cool, but they really kind of make or break the space. So one of the things I've noticed when uh, designers are learning SketchUp is that when they're putting in this entourage, I'm gonna turn off my shadows here for a moment to make it go a little faster, um, is that they're like, okay, great. I've dropped something onto the shelf there. And when they go to orbit, they notice that it's floating a little, a little bit. So a cool extension is uh, Drop GC. If I just pre-select this and go up to Drop GC, it drops it right on to the surface below, onto the face below. Same thing with this bowl of pine cones, still floating, whoop. I am in a wall, ceiling. All right, floating, Drop GC, and it drops down there. I'm sure the folks in the chat can put a link to that extension. It's free, super easy. It's just, you know, that's the function, love it. Nice. All right. So the other thing about having lots of entourage in your model is that uh, it can weigh it down quite a bit. So I'm sure that you've noticed when you bring in all those little bits and pieces, your model starts to creak quite a bit. So one of the things I like to do is have a file with uh, all those bits and pieces at the ready 
and ready to copy and paste into a master file. That's kind of like my yard sale looking uh, uh, <laughs> uh, shopping area. And this is not a new concept, but, uh, but I, I really enjoy doing this uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I kind of have a curated um, uh, you know, shopping area. And you can totally do that in the 3D warehouse too. You can organize all your favorite models and collections. But uh, one thing that you can do if you have a file like this is to simplify the model so that when you copy and paste it into, into your master file, it doesn't weigh it down. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna open my entity info and I'm gonna work on the space a bit. So if I triple click onto it, you can see it's pretty heavy and it's looking pretty round. We've got a lot of, you know, a lot of faces going on here. This might weigh down my model if I had a bunch of these. So one of the things I can do is run it through an extension called Skimp. And I can go ahead and just show you real quickly how to do that. I'm gonna go to Skimp Simplify Selection, another really simple uh, extension to use. I can see all the information here and just move this slider and you can see it start to get less faces. All right, I'm gonna leave it right about, yeah, I'll do it a little more. Choose replace. And it's gonna purge the unused information so that it keeps my file lightweight. If you've gone to model info purge under statistics, that's basically what it's doing for this one group. So and that is that is a huge thing for people because one of the reasons people stay away from entourage or use 2D entourage is because the weight it adds to the model. Yeah, absolutely. And that is absolutely an incredible way to simplify that and keep your model light, but keep those details in there. Cause you don't need, like you showed, you don't need 10,000 polygons for a vase no. that's sitting on the shelf in the back of the room. So you can see now it's got less, I could still go lighter weight because like you just said, Aaron, this is gonna be sitting on a shelf somewhere far away. So up close, it did get a little bit more jagged, but from far away, it looks totally fine. So this is great for things like doorknobs or just you know hardware, any small thing in the background. Um, it's also great for uh, large pieces that appear around like sofas and office chairs. Um, you may need to adjust it less if it's in the foreground, but um, it's great for simplifying things ahead of time. So now when I copy and paste this into my model, especially for plants over here, oh my gosh. But when I copy and paste it into my model, um, it's gonna be simplified already. So once I run it through Skimp, I don't have to do it every single time. The other great thing about this is that I can pre-tag it. So you can see that I have a tag on here. This is my naming system. I, I numerically name my tags. So two underscore high poly, all of these are going to be pre-tagged with that. You can see it in the entity info up here. So when I copy and paste these pieces into a model like this one and I select it, it's already going to have that tag. I don't have to go around and delete the tags that it came in from the warehouse with and tag it. Um, here I can automatically, you know, just turn that tag off, work on my model and, uh, and turn it back on when I'm ready to present. So, and then I have a couple more tricks to keep your file lightweight. Well, one more trick that we can talk about right now. Uh, to keep your file lightweight, uh, you can see under my presentation file here, bring everything back for a moment. Um, when I go to my styles and I uh, edit my edges, I have my profiles on. And that's something else that can kind of weigh down your uh, model because when you're orbiting, SketchUp is having to kind of process all of those, uh, all of those profiles. So you can turn that off and that'll speed it up. Of course, we all know, you know, turn off the shadows too when you're working on it. Um, but turning off those profiles is a great way to speed up your model. So be sure that when you have your working scene set, those profiles are turned off. I like to have them on sometimes for my presentation um, scene because I do lose, if, you, if I turn these off, you can see these cats start to look flat. I kind of lose some cool details here. Um, so that's, you know, if you're getting a really flat looking elevation or something, you might want to consider turning those back on just for that scene. Good deal. And Tammy, we got about 10 more minutes. So, uh, you know, All take right. your time. Well, I've got one more uh, little tidbit for everybody. And I know I shared this a couple weeks ago in the kitchen and bath, um, 
uh, webinar, but it's I just use it so much that I want to show it to y'all again. So I'm, I guess I'll go to my working scene. All right, so you can see I have a couple of swatches down here that I brought in. I imported these wood tones. And I'd like to try and swap, sw switch out uh, the wood tones here with these. Normally, I would need to double click, double click, you know, try and get to the face level to apply those materials because it is, you know, really important to apply it directly to the face and not to the outer wrapper. Um, so, normally, I'd have to do that for every single group and component. But I like to use Material, place, material Replacer, and that's under, I always forget where that is, under Tools, and this is an extension. Uh, I, I click on what I'd like to replace and then click on what I'd like to replace it with. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a really wow. good way to just swap two, uh, two samples out and that will be at the face level. So I love this extension. It works so well for me. It, it, kitchen cabinets is the main place I use this, um, but yeah, it'll work for a lot of different functions. So again, I'll do that with this plywood sample and we'll just you know try out a few different things. So that's another really, uh, really fun way to use extensions. Oh, wait, you know, since we have time, I do want to show one more thing that is kind of bothering me. So this bike back here, uh, we've got a lot going on. All these edges wow. are showing. Yeah, it's just like kind of busy. And I know that we don't always have bikes in our model, but this happens a lot with, you know, if we bring in a sofa and it's got all these edges showing or pillows or, you know, we've all experienced it. So one of the things you can do is you can double click down to the face level and I'm gonna triple click, hold down shift, just grab a few of these, just triple clicking so that I can select all of those edges and under my soften and smooth edges window, I'm just gonna move that slider slightly. And that looks so much better. So you can see the comparison, this compared to this, it's nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna, gonna save. So I would do that, you know, with a lot, of, a lot of these bits and pieces here, but works really well on all those upholstered goods that we run into as interior designers. Sweet, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that. Those are all the tips I have at the moment. But I'm looking forward to everybody's questions. All right. Well, we can do that. All right. Let me go ahead and hop back in so I can see y'all. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Now before we get into the question and answer part, I think we should get into the quiz. That's right. This, yeah. We have so a surprise so to give away. That's right. Oh, we yeah. have a prize. I was like, what's the quiz? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so if you've been paying attention, uh, Tammy mentioned something in her presentation, and uh, she's going to ask you a question now. And the first person to answer will win one hour's consultation, one on one with Tammy Cody. So, and, and and note this time, we didn't do this last time, but this time, spelling is going to count. So last yes. time we were kind of loose, but this time. You got to spell it right. So first person right. to put the Liver proper fingers. answer up, correctly spelled, wins that one hour of consultation. So with that, I'll hand it over. Tammy, go ahead and ask your question. Oh, I get to ask it. Okay. You do. Everybody ready? Got your typing okay. ready? Here it right. goes. What was the name of my car in the second slide? What did I name it? It was on the tag. <laughs> Judge. Had a little tree house. <laughs> She was camping in the mountain west that gave you a clue. Oh, oh. Uh, that was Christy Hennell is the oh. is the winner there. Wow. It's going by so fast. Oh, there's so <laughs> you're also oh, oh, please stop. <laughs> See, I want to make sure that you know. Oh my gosh. Uh yes, the first person to put uh, I give up. I don't know. I'll just come back. I'm, I'm seeing Heather or Bailey. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We'll, have to check, we'll we, check it at the end when not everything stops flying by. Yeah. Right. And uh, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, well, you know what? Production will reach out to the first person who answered it correctly. But uh, Tammy Cody, thanks again. Everyone, round of applause. For that awesome, awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. So we did have a lot of questions come in. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at what we had. All right. Uh, like I said, we're going to go through a couple of these questions. We, we actually have a little bit of time, so we might get through quite a few. If okay. you had a question that did not get answered or does not get asked, that's where we're asking people to head over to our fireside lounge 
in the forum and uh, ask them there. So with that, we're going to start at the top and just start working our way down. Mm -hmm. So the first question is from James, uh, James Ogston. And okay. you showed a couple different extensions, but James is wondering what your favorite extension is for your interior design work. Okay, so lately my favorite extension has been Solar North. And that's another really simple one to use because sometimes I'll build a model and I haven't geolocated it or anything like that, but um, I'll build a model and I want to turn on my shadows and get it to come through a window just right for the rendering. And I can't, you know, I can't adjust the shadow settings to get it to come in. So I'll change where the sun is coming from using the Solar North extension um, so that I can get the shadows to look the way I want them to or the way it would better represent in my client's home. So that's a good one. And that's that's actually a, a free extension yes. uh, from the SketchUp team. Cool. Nice. Uh, looks like the next question up uh, is, how do you do your field measures at the client's home? Are they there and you and do they aid you in the measure, uh, checking your documentation and so forth? So how, how does that how does that process look when when you're you know like going to take those measurements? That's, yeah. That sounds terrible. You have the client behind you double checking every measurement. That sounds like a, <laughs> so. How do I a, handle it when the client? Solid day. <laughs> yeah, I I really have to maybe maybe let me know if I'm understanding the question incorrectly. But um, I really have to tell the client ahead of time, manage their expectations. Like when it's measure time. I, I'm not going to be able to talk to you or else I'll have to charge you more time, <laughs> which sometimes <laughs> people just want to talk, so that's fine. But I mean, I don't say it quite like that, but I try and manage their expectations. I also bring on site with me a digital measure so that, you know, we've all been there where we're, you know, doing the tape measure and then we roll it back in and they say something and we're like, oh, shoot, I need to do that again. <laughs> So digital measure is key because you just have it in your hand. Whenever they say something, you can say, okay, ready to write that down. So uh, on that note, I don't know if there was another question on this note, but I do want to mention, I don't uh, take a piece of paper with me and scratch out the dimensions. I take my laptop with me on site. If I don't have a scanning device, I um, will take my laptop, sketch up. I'll draw it directly into SketchUp on site. So. Um, I don't know if that answers any questions. That helps me. Oh, I think that's it. Charles. Yeah, Charles, thanks for asking that question. Uh, what else we get, Aaron? I also right. want to point out mm -hmm. that my mom said, good job, mom, <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> thanks, mom. Thanks for coming by, mom. That, that would be, that would be <laughs> according to our trivia, that yeah. would be Tammy Ma. Tammy. Okay, <laughs> yes. No, Ma, Ma Tammy. Next question. Not, yeah. <laughs> um, do you use SketchUp for construction drawings and are you able to scale the drawings? I think I think they're looking for uh, how do you go about creating your final documentation is really the I question. See. So yeah, I get this question a lot. Can I create uh, construction documents with layout? Do I need a different program? I keep it all within uh, SketchUp and layout. And I think that we saw that, you know, if you want to go back and watch Nick Saunders, he, uh, he definitely hones in on that as well. Um, yeah, you can, I mean, I showed a little bit about of that with the window schedule and those as builts, but they make it really easy to add patterns. So if you're doing like a site plan, you can add in a shape with a pattern to represent the driveway or foliage. And, you know, like we would see on a site plan, you know, it's, it's a professional site plan. So you can scale it in layout to fit, you know, an ARC D 24 by 36 paper size. Um, is it 26 by 34? I can't remember. My brain's mush. But uh, <laughs> the big, the big paper that you have on a construction site, um, it you know, it it jumps right into that paper size as well. So everything that you would need to annotate uh, for a construction document is there, and I've used them for construction documents and permits and you know requests and things like that. Great. Yep. Good deal. So there you go, good Shazia. Deal. And the good yeah. thing about that is that you're not, if you're using a different program, you're constantly having to keep track of the changes, you know, in SketchUp and Layout versus whatever other program you're doing. And it can it can be kind of tricky and stressful. And if you have it all within SketchUp and Layout, all of your changes transfer over to Layout. I just couldn't recommend it, that workflow more. So. Good deal. Good deal. I was just looking at uh, uh, messaging from production, and it looks like we actually have time for a few more questions. So if you okay. haven't asked one yet, go ahead and pop it in there or upvote one. Uh, the next question comes from uh, from John. Pike, oh, wait, huh? Pike? It's just John. John P. John. John, John P. P. 
Sorry, sorry, John. Uh, John asks, do you prefer to work from 3D Revit, 2D CAD, or 2D plan images to begin house modeling when you're first starting out? Like, like wh what do you like to have as a, as a beginning reference? I, I was going to say, what are the options? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't really start out with an AutoCAD file or Revit file or anything like that. I just dive right into SketchUp with... Uh, there are a lot of different starting points though. Sometimes I will have an AutoCAD file that somebody else gave to me and that is my starting point. Sometimes I'm the first one on the job like that, uh, that window schedule, the massive house in Hollywood that I showed you and I have to hand measure all of it or scan it. So sometimes that's my starting point. Sometimes I have an image slash PDF also like that, that window schedule job. Um, it, it really depends on the project. What I prefer to do if I had uh, my preference is either a scan to CAD, uh, like the Canvas software. Um, I prefer that because I already have a 3D model to go from. Uh, that's the most fun and quickest start. But I, if I were uh, starting from scratch, I actually prefer to trace over an image because then I know that the model that I built is how, built how I want it to be built. And it helps me get to know the drawing, it can take a little longer because you know, you're measuring everything out, but it helps me really get to know the space. Like, ooh, this bathroom is gonna be you know, tight squeeze or you know, I'm getting to know what I'm designing, so. I, I, I guess, I guess part, I mean, just, just to, to keep going with that thought, that a lot of that comes down to if you're working on existing work or something brand new, right? Right, um, yep. How, how much of your work is new versus redesign? Oh gosh, I would say 75% of my stuff is a redesign, a remodel, you know, a new builds, those are, I feel like there's less of them because they take so long. <laughs> You're just true. working on them for longer, you know, it just takes a, a very long time. Remodels take a long time too, but you can do, you know, one room here, or one room there. So I do a lot of those, a lot of kitchens. Uh, people need lots of help with their kitchens, and <laughs> kitchen, you know. Well, according to our poll, you should be spending time in the living room because that's where <laughs> I voted, I think I would vote bathroom because that's the only place you can escape your children these days. <laughs> you can walk so, the door. You're going to put your your uh, $50,000 upgrade into your bathroom? Yeah, I'm going to make it um, the best. My office is going to be in there. No, awesome. uh, but yeah. All, All right, right. We, got, uh, we, we got a request here from uh, Grace McKinley. Okay. I had an easy last name, Goose, sorry. Uh, <laughs> She's wondering if you have any tips for working with tile. So saying, uh, you know, it's hard to show material, especially if you have a funky shape like herringbone or other special layout and seamless repeating. What's the best way to show tile in a model? Ah, tile can be the ah. bane of my existence. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel about doing tiles sometimes. No. All right, next question. <laughs> that's how I deal with it. Ah. No, um, it, no, it, Tile is tricky because like she just said, there are so many different patterns and different materials and you know, it's just, there's a lot going on. And there's actually a really good webinar that Josh did on textures and he touched on tile. I bet we could put that in the chat because he can expand on that there. But there's really two options. Either you find a texture that is close enough to the tile that you're looking for and you may not find it just because like I said, there's so many patterns. Um, so just find a good representation and apply it to the face of your tile group um, or you can draw out you know an edge for each tile and do a repeating texture so that way and for that i would recommend uh, using your move plus option or uh, control on a pc is that it is it control nailed yep. it okay i always miss it on pc but uh <laughs> to create an array so you kind of create the pattern and then you can use that to continue the pattern. So you don't have to draw every single little bit and piece out. But um, those are really your two basic options. Um, there's some good tile generators out there. Um, I have been looking into those recently because I do you know, struggle to find those good tile images. But if you search tile uh, seamless pattern generator, um, there's some good ones out there. Uh, there's Mocha. Yes, uh, thank you, Mike, for putting that in the chat. That's a good tile generator. Nice. nice. Aaron, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, two more. We got two more. Oh, okay. we're allowed to do. Yay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so I'll ask the next one. Okay. Uh, um, so, what common mistakes would you say one should avoid to get the best interior design? What are some common mistakes that, that are avoidable 
Uh, Ishan K asks. All right. So I actually just did a whole blog post on this. Uh, we could link to that in the chat too. On SketchUp's blog, I did the top, uh, what I feel like can be top mistakes in interior design. So let me think back to that article. Um, <laughs> I think you just Josh is going to come in with the slam dunk any minute now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't ruin the article. Just give us like the top one or two. Yeah, I'm, I'm like trying to remember. Got to go read the whole. Get, get all so of them. My top one, which was actually the bottom one, was yes. to throw out the rules and you know do what you like. But uh, the the most important thing would be to pay attention to the principles of interior design. Um, mm -hmm. That is uh, balance, uh, unity. Repetition is a good one, but balance is the main one. I mean, you could walk into a room and it feel like it's a little bit off. And mm -hmm. if you think about, you know, what's what's creating or creating balance or creating an imbalance in the room, you can start to think about that. Like if you have visual weight all on one side and not much on the other, then that can feel off. So uh, another thing that uh, my other top one would be um, uh, visual clutter just you need to be able to have a clear visual path path and have your eye rest um so that it can focus on you know whatever is um supposed to be the shining star in the room like the fireplace or the visual focus you know you need it your eye needs a place to rest so, so. you know that's the, I, I don't know if this is the same rule for interior design uh this is something i've i've read about for looking at like illustrations and that kind of thing is like when you look at something let your head like picture your head kind of on a gimbal and just like let it flow and see where it goes uh -huh. um, rather than like trying to be real start because you should have movement right when you look mm -hmm. at a room you should like okay I come in here and I go across here to here like that's a good thing isn't it yeah yeah I'm just imagining myself walking into a client's room and going like this <laughs> maybe that's after you tell them to stop talking to you and have them leave ask them yeah, yeah. like wait wait let me get let me get a feel for what's there you go <laughs> All right, one last question here. Uh, this is from Michael P. And I'm not abbreviating his last name. It actually says Michael P. Okay. Um, he's asking for tips on putting uh, textures into a model without ruining the texture. So how do you bring in fabric on a chair or a sofa, et cetera? How would you go about that? Without ruining it. Without so ruining it. yeah, uh, I've got, I'm like, oh man, I know exactly which video I would show you. Um, but uh, from the SketchUp, uh, YouTube channel, there's some a few really good texture uh, where they show how to apply a projected texture onto a curved surface. So that is or a curved surface. Um, that is really important to take a look at because I know people get frustrated when they apply a texture to something that has you know triangulated uh, uh, surface to appear curved. And they're like, why does it look so funky and, mm -hmm. and weird so uh be sure to check out the sketchup youtube channel for the proper way to do that but you have to project you know unproject your texture but that's a hard one to, that's a hard one to just say as a quick yeah, answer it's projected just, texture I, check it out i'm just saying i get your frustration <laughs> applying textures to the curved looking surfaces to upholstered goods it can be so frustrating but there is a solution so youtube channel SketchUp's YouTube channel. Um, but my best advice is to always apply it to the face. You know, some every once in a blue moon, there, it's appropriate to apply it to the wrapper. I usually don't, I try not to. Always apply the texture directly to the face. So you need to be able to select the face. You don't have to select it, but you need to be able to get to that face level. Um, and a common frustration with that is that it doesn't render properly. If you've just painted the group or the wrapper, your rendering is going to look kind of funky. Um, so Especially if it's like a texture or something that can reset or, yeah. Yeah, and you can always check that out in the entity info window. So if you just click on your group and it doesn't have that default, um, that default color, the blue and the white or whatever color you have your back face, um, you want to make sure you look into getting that default back into the wrapper. That makes sense. But the, the most important part of that answer, though, is check out the YouTube video for SketchUp or the YouTube channel for SketchUp. That's really the part that I yes. take away from that. There are so many good videos <laughs> and there's this guy on, <laughs> on a lot of those. So they're often, but nice. yeah, and, be sure and, to, and you, go to, when you go to YouTube, don't just search SketchUp and look for the, go to SketchUp's YouTube channel, which we could put in the chat, but, and that, and then search from there. 
Yeah, yeah. And then while you are giving us tips, we have commenters also giving like meta tips. And the good nice. thing is like all, yeah, all these comments actually stay here. So if you come back later, if you miss something, because uh, people were mentioning extensions like paint through that they like a lot for that. Oh, yeah. Through paint. Purpose. Yeah. yeah, or through paint. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, keep that in mind. That stuff is going to stick around. Uh, so if you're, if you're missing it live or if you missed it the first time, come on back. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I know we were gonna we were gonna wrap up, but uh, it, it was a it was just a conversation happened in the chat about uh, what peripherals you use. Um, people are talking about tablets, uh, pens, no. mice, three D mice. Do you use anything in particular? Or, I know you mentioned you said something about using a trackpad at one point, which was made me sweat a little. I don't. Oh, <laughs> um, so did I say that in this one? Uh, so I've got my just basic mouse right here, three button cheapo mouse. I think this thing was $20. I know sometimes people buy the expensive ones and they go to scroll and it's just like, woo, you know, it, it, the, the expensive ones you don't need, you don't need for basic SketchUp use. Um, so three button mouse for sure. I do use a trackpad often. Um, and I know people are like, yeah, because you're supposed to use a mouse. This is the most efficient way to use SketchUp. But I don't always have a spot. That massive house, I had no furniture. You know, I had a kitchen counter at one point, and that was it when I was drawing it. It was on, it was on the ground, like hunched over my computer, which I learned my lesson, bring a table. But moving <laughs> out the house, I have to use my trackpad. So I have to kind of get used to using that, um, using the, you know, the, the keys, the control plus command to pan and orbit, add shift. Mm -hmm. So the map, the, um, the what was it called the 3d mouse i have one of those i don't use it super often uh i it's like i'd be kind of like a 15 year old hopping into a car and it's like what you know i'm so oh, no no it. you're never too no, never yeah. too old you're, you're never too young or never 15 year old in the car yeah yeah so it's yeah, just, i got that i can use it but it's not I'm, i don't feel efficient enough to use them every day yet i should probably get used to it but you can't, you can't parallel level. mark with it yet yeah. Next level. Yeah. So <laughs> definitely all, all people email me all the time. What do I need to get started? You just need a compatible computer, you know, the compatible system, uh, three button mouse and download SketchUp. So yeah. basically what I use, I'm pretty minimal in what I use. That's good. Very good. All right. Well, let's get a, a round of applause for Tammy Cody guys for coming in. <laughs> There was so much to absorb in such a short period of time, but thanks for coming. And uh, yeah, me. yeah, yeah, Aaron. And then, uh, and so Tammy's going to meet us after in the after party. Tell us more about that. Yeah. So head on over to our for We'll put a link up right now. There's actually should be a link down at the bottom right now. It says head to the fireside chat lounge. Uh, it's an online opportunity for you to ask those questions that didn't get answered or things that you've thought up since they, we did the Q and a with her. Uh, and uh, she's going to hang out there for about half an hour, answering, just typing furiously. She's going to just I'll wear out the keyboard. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Timmy. Awesome. All right. Thank you so Thanks. much. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. All right. Man, Aaron, that was a very exciting, very exciting time. That was good. Oh, man, but it looks, yeah, like it is, the sun is setting on yet another episode of With Us All Around the Fire. Yeah, uh, yeah. Be sure to check out Tammy's website, uh, which should be, uh, if not listed below, then it'll be over in the forum. We'll, we'll get it to you. Don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, be sure to join us in the lounge. Uh, thanks. And I will let Aaron take us away with maybe some parting words of wisdom. Right. I'm going to plug in on what Tammy said. Use groups and components. Not doing so is like letting your loose geometry just fall everywhere. It's like letting your kids run in traffic. And it's bad <laughs> to let your kids run in traffic. That's right. All right, everyone. Thanks. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Ciao.